My name is Sparkle and I'm reading the Enchanted Word by Enid Blyton. This is chapter 27, The Land of Birthdays. The children set off once again for the Enchanted Wood. They knew the way to the faraway tree very well now. Wisha, 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 whispered the trees as the children ran between them. Bessie put her arms round one of them and pressed her left ear to the trunk. What secret are they saying today? she asked. We wish you a happy birthday, whispered the leaves. Bessie laughed. It was so fun to have a birthday. When they came to the faraway tree, how marvellous it looked. The folk of the tree had decked it with flags because it was Bessie's birthday and it looked simply lovely. Oh, said Bessie, I feel so happy. The only thing I wish I had was proper party clothes and not my old ones. But that couldn't be helped. They were just about to begin to climb the tree when Dame Washalot's big washing basket came bumping down on the end of Moonface's rope for the children to get into. Good, said Joe. get in girls. They all got in and went up the tree at a tremendous rate. Moonface must have some help to pull everyone up, said Joe, astonished. He had Mr Whiskers there too, with Mr What's-A-Name and the old saucepan man, and they were all pulling like anything. No wonder that basket shut up the tree. Many happy returns of the day, said everyone, kissing Bessie. Oh, good. You're not in your best clothes, said Moonface. We wondered if you would make it a fancy dress party, Bessie. Oh, I'd love to, said Bessie, but we haven't got any fancy dresses. We could easily get those at the birthday land, said Silky, clapping her hands with joy. Good, good, good. I like a fancy dress party. Everyone is ready to go, said Moonface. The brownies are just below us. Where's Saucepan? Hey, Saucepan Pat, man, where have you got to? He stepped into the slippery slip by mistake, said a brownie appearing out of Moonface's house. He went down the slide with us at an awful noise. I expect he's at the bottom by now. Oh, good gracious, just like silly old saucepan, said Moonface. We'd better let down the washing basket for him or he'll never get up to us again. So down the basket went again and old saucepan got into it and came up with a clatter of saucepans and kettles. Now, are we really all ready, said Moonface? Silky, what's his name? Saucepan, the angry pixie, Dame Washalot. Mr. Whiskers, the brownies. Gracious, what a lovely lot of people are coming, said Bessie, seeing all the brownies and the tree folk on the branches below. Is that Mother Washalot? What a nice old woman. Dame Washalot was jolly and beaming. For once in a way, she was going to leave her wash tub. Going to the land of birthdays was not a treat to be missed. Come on then, said Moonface, and he led the way to the ladder. Up he went, popped his head above to make sure the land of birthdays was there, and then jumped straight into it. Everyone climbed up. That's all, I think, said Moonface, peering down. Oh no, there's someone else. Whoever is it? I thought we were all here. Gracious, it's my clock, said Silky. The one I got at the land of Take What You Want. Sure enough it was. Ding dong, ding dong, it cried as it climbed with its flat feet. All right, all right, we'll wait for you, said Silky. Go carefully up the ladder. You weren't really asked, you know. Oh, I'd love your clock to come to my party, said Bessie at once. Come along, clock. Ding dong, said the clock, pleased, 
and managed to get up the ladder. The land of birthdays was simply beautiful. It began with there was always birthday weather there, brilliant sunshine, blue sky and a nice little breeze. The trees were always green and there were always daisies and buttercups growing in the fields. Oh, it's lovely, it's lovely, said Bessie, dancing around joyfully. Moonface, what about fancy dresses? Where do we get them? Oh, you'll find them in that house over there, said Moonface, pointing to a very pretty house. And they all trooped over to it. As they went, a small brown rabbit hopped out of holes, shouting a happy birthday to Bessie and popped back. It was all very exciting. Everyone crowded into the pretty house. It was full of cupboards and in the cupboards were the most thrilling dresses that you could think of. Oh, look at this, cried Joe in delight as he came across a red Indian dress with a wonderful headdress of bright feathers. Just the right size for me. He put it on. Bessie chose a dress like a fairy's and Fanny chose a clown's dress with a pointed hat. She looked fine. Moonface dressed up as a pirate and Silky became a daffodil. Mr. What's the name was a policeman and as for old saucepan man, he simply could not find a fancy dress to fit him because he was so bumpy with all the saucepans and kettles. Everyone else dressed up and dear me, they did look fine. Bessie had wings with her dress, but she was disappointed because she couldn't fly with them. How she would have loved to spread them and fly as the real fairies did. Now for balloons, said Silky, and she danced into the sunshine and ran up to an old balloon woman who was sitting surrounded by a great cloud of colored balloons. Everyone chose one and what games they had. Suddenly, a tea bell rang and Moonface gave a scream of joy. Tea! Birthday tea! Come on, everyone! He rushed to a long, long table set out in the field and Bessie ran with the others and took her place at the head. But to her great surprise and disappointment, there was no food on the table at all. Only just empty plates, cups and glasses. Don't look so upset, whispered Silky. You've got to wish your own tea. Bessie gave a squeak. Wish her own tea? That would be the best fun in the world. Uh, don't wish for bread and butter, said Moonface. Wish for orange jelly. I like that. I wish for orange jelly, said Bessie at once, and immediately a large, fat, wobbly jelly appeared on one of the empty dishes. Moonface helped himself. Wish for strawberries and cream, said Fanny, who simply loved that. I wish for strawberries and cream, said Bessie, and an enormous dish of strawberries appeared with a large jug of cream beside it. And I wish for chocolate biscuits too, and ice lemonade, and a chocolate blancmange, and treacle pudding, and strawberry ices, and, and, and... Fruit salad, yelled someone. Sausage rolls, cried what's-her-name. Jam tarts, begged Mr Whiskers. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, said Silky's clock in the greatest excitement, and everyone laughed. Don't wish for ding-dongs, said Joe. We've got plenty of those, as long as Silky's clock's here. The clock struck 14 without stopping. It wasn't able to sit down, but it wandered about looking as happy as ever. Everyone began to eat. My goodness, it was a wonderful tea. The strawberries and cream and the ices went almost at once for Mr Whiskers, and 50 brownies liked those very much, so Bessie had to wish for some more. 
What about my birthday cake? She said to Silky. Do I wish for that too? No, it just comes, said Silky. It will appear right in the middle of the table. You just watch. Bessie watched. There was a wonderful silver dish in the middle of the table. Something seemed to be forming there. A curious sort of mist hung over it. The birthday cake is coming, said Joe. And everyone watched the silver dish. Gradually, a great cake shaped itself there. Oh, a wonderful cake with red, pink, white and yellow icing. All around the side were flowers made of sweets and on the top were eight candles burning for Bessie was eight that day. Her name was written in big sugar letters on the top. Bessie, a very happy birthday. Bessie felt very proud. She had to cut the cake, of course. It was quite a difficult job because there were so many people to cut for. This is a wishing cake, said Moonface when everyone had a piece on their plate. So wish, wish, wish. When you eat it, your wish will come true. The children stared at him in delight. What should they wish? Fanny was just holding her cake in her hand, thinking of a wish when old saucepan man upset everything. Whatever do you think he did?